Hi everybody, Ali from Potent Printables here. This is going to be part two of my MIB Neuralizer series. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to make the easy version of the Neuralizer. And that gets rid of the majority of the sanding, painting, and priming, as well as it doesn't have any electronics. It still springs open and closed. It does have a modestly painted control panel and flashy thing part. So that's what we're going to do in this video. But if you're interested in the harder version, I'll leave a link to that video in the description down below once it releases. So that said, let's get into the build. So here we have the CAD for the simple neuralizer shown in an exploded view. Um, you can see some of the main parts are the top piece which slides in and out of the bottom shell. There's a spring that nests into the top piece that lets the neuralizer spring open when actuated. The lever can trigger that actuation or you can do it with your thumb up at the top. There's a control panel that has its three buttons which are bonded in and the switch which also gets bonded in. And then finally there's the red flashy thing part which will get pressed in to this top piece. So if I animate the collapse, you can get a general idea of how this goes together. Now I can do a section view to give you some more of the details. So when the neuralizer is pushed together, what provides the holding force to overcome the spring, which is now compressed? Well, there's a magnet that gets bonded into the top piece and a magnet that gets bonded into the bottom piece. And so when this is pushed together and they touch and click together, that provides enough force to overcome the spring. So when you want to open this, you can either toggle the handle, which will push up on the bottom piece, break the connection of the magnets and let it spring open. Or you can also push up at the gap between the top and the bottom piece up top here. And that will also break the connection between the magnets. So when it opens, there are also magnets in the top piece and the hard stop of the bottom piece. And that lets you, that lets the top piece click into the hard stop and kind of hold it up top. All right, and generally how the design works, we have to start printing some pieces out. Here you can see all the printed pieces laid out. And to keep this build simple, we're not gonna do very much post-processing at all. We're just gonna do a little cleanup with acetone. Here I'm just taking a little bit of acetone and rubbing it over areas that either had support or didn't build so well. And that basically will just clean up some of these build artifacts. Now we're gonna start some of the very minimal painting that we're gonna do in this build. So this is the flashy thing part, which will be painted red. So I haven't done any sanding or priming or anything like that. Um, I'm just using a red paint pen and I'm gonna put um, a coat of red paint on. Now, I think I put one or two coats on total and I may have done a little touch up at the end if the part got scratched at all. Here I'm applying a second coat of white acrylic paint to the control panel for the neuralizer. I haven't done any sanding or filling or priming. This is just applying paint to the raw 3D printed part. Now that the parts are painted, we can start to bond in all the magnets. I use a two-part epoxy that you can see there. It's JB Quick Weld. And I apply that to the hole that the magnet is gonna get pressed into. And then I will press the magnet in by hand. And then I'll use a, a harder surface and press down to fully seat the magnet. Now we're gonna bond in the magnet that complements the one we just did. So you can see that I'm adding epoxy to the bottom half of the neuralizer at the hole that's way down at the bottom. Then you'll see I'll grab the top half with the magnet that I'm pressing in already stuck on in the correct orientation. Then I'll just slide it down in and start pressing. For this magnet, I found that I have to use a long solid object like this paint pen to apply additional force to really seat the magnet. 
and finally I bonded in the smallest magnet. So here is the magnet in the hard stop getting bonded in and the other magnet in that goes in the top piece is bonded in a similar fashion. Just make sure to get the orientation correct. Now that all the magnets are bonded in place, we're going to bond on all the dials on the control panel and the switch on the control panel. So here you can see I'm bonding the largest dial in place, but all the other dials and the switch are bonded in in a similar manner. Now I'm going to install the clip using the M2 by 8 dowel pin. Once I get that set to the right depth, I add a little bit of epoxy to each side, being careful not to get any epoxy on the clip and making sure the clip can still pivot. One of the final steps is installing the spring. So I've already cut the spring down from its original size, having about five turns remaining, and you'll need a pair of heavy duty wire cutters to do this. Now I'm just testing to see whether the magnet can latch. So I'm installing the upper part into the lower, getting the orientation right, matching up the grooves, and then I'm depressing the top to see if the magnet will latch and overcome the spring. In this case, the spring is still too powerful. So what we do then is we cut half a turn off the spring and we keep doing that until we find the magnets will latch reliably. One thing to note though, if you cut the spring too short, it won't be long enough or have enough force to launch the top part up to the hard stop. That means when you trigger a release, you might not get a fully open condition. So now I've, I have cut the spring shorter and I'm testing it again to see whether I get a reliable latching condition. So you can here you can see when I depress it, it stays latched and I need to trigger it with my finger, which is what I'm doing up at the top end. Finally, we need to bond in the upper hard stop. That's the piece at the center of this picture with the magnet. This is probably the trickiest step in this whole assembly. The reason for that is there's limited space to work in and the complementary magnet in the top piece is always pulling at and wants to disrupt the placement of the magnet in the hard stop. So first I'm going to add epoxy to each of the dowel pin holes so that the dowel pins will be bonded in place once they're inserted. Then I'm going to apply epoxy to the whole half moon perimeter of the hard stop. And the hard stop needs to be positioned so that the holes for the dowel pins to go through are clear. Then you need to insert the dowel pins one by one, as I've shown here, and just make sure they're below the surface of the bottom shell and the epoxy isn't anywhere it shouldn't be. And we're done. We have our fully assembled neuralizer, which is spring loaded open and will reliably latch closed. Now we can go erase some memories. So that's how you build the easy version of the MIB Neuralizer. If you like this video and you've been enjoying my content, please hit that subscribe button. Be sure to check out some of my other designs on my channel and I'll see you guys in the next video. Now go print something potent.